and welcome to Creating in Color, sharing the creative endeavors of people of color. I'm your host, KB, and today I'm joined by Olivia, a writer and director. How are you today, Olivia? I'm doing pretty well. <laughs> so can you tell us what is a writer and what is a director? So basically, a writer is someone who has this crazy imagination and then they're bold enough to write these ideas down on a paper and then a director takes that idea and tries to form the image in the writer's head like the director he's basically the captain or she is basically the captain of like the ship so they tell wardrobe and production and all these people what to do in order to get the writer's vision onto screen And just to clarify, you are a writer and director for live action? So I do do a lot of live action, although I do have like a bunch of uh, short animation, no dialogue scripts. So yes, I I mostly do live action, but also I really have a secret passion for animation. So (laughs) how do you find a difference between writing for live action versus writing for animation? So my mentor actually gave me some really good advice. And he was saying like, what are some of the things that you're seeing in short films versus like short animations? And one of the key things you see is like some of the stuff in animations you can't make into a live action. I mean, you have CGI, but it'd be easier as like an animation. Like for instance, like one of my favorites is hair love. And there's a scene where the dad is trying to fight the daughter's hair and they end up the hair and the dad ended up in a boxing rink and, or in a ring. And then they start like, you know, fighting it out. And that's something that you can't have in a live action. So if you have a scene that's specifically like, oh, I can't shoot that as a live action, it would typically be uh, animation. Okay. Wow. That's way more simple of an answer than I thought. thought (laughs) When you simplified it for me, I was like, oh, (laughs) yeah, that does make sense. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. Wow. Okay. Thank you. (laughs) And how did you get started in the entertainment industry? first times I was ever exposed to the industry was like was my mom and I got an audition um for like a kid show or something I ultimately didn't end up getting the um the gig but it was like one of my first times like going into the industry and like experiencing that and then I remember a few years later my mom's friend actually bought me a making of book and it was the making of Titanic and I remember it was like the thickest book ever and Titanic was already my favorite movie and this is when it was on like VHS so I have like and it was like a two-part VHS too so like that was like the best experience for me to have that book and like the two VHS tapes and watching it and reading the book and seeing how it's made and those are like my two like introductions to film. Did you always know that you wanted to be in the entertainment industry or did you have interest in some other kind of career? I did not always know. My mom was like the you can be anything you want to be and then my dad was like the dream killer. So he basically was like you want to be in art? There's no money in that. And so I went into biology and it kind of was like I was happy because it was like, oh, I'm making, you know, decent money. I'm really smart. This is so cool. And then as soon as I got my degree, I was like, oh, my God, I actually really hate this. So <laughs> so then, like, I think the year I graduated, I started modeling and I started acting and then I was on stage doing plays and then I picked up a camera and it just kind of like spiraled <laughs> until like I figured out that I loved writing I really love directing wow amazing okay so you studied biology but the dream could not be filled (laughs) and you went into the arts and modeled act now you're Mm -hmm. writing and directing yeah wow it's a lot yeah (laughs) how how do you find the time to like, like I'm sure it wasn't all stacked on top of each other but how do you find the time in like the the focus, I guess, to be able to pursue all these things? Um, well, at the time, I was, I think I was doing, I was, like, on stage for a few plays, and then I was, like, doing, like, some commercial work on the side, and then I was helping out, like, my friends with their photography, and so, like, I was actually doing three of these things all at once, and I just don't remember how I had the energy, but, like, it became like to the point where like I would have modeling friends and I used to carry around like this notebook 
and I used to like write down like modeling ideas and like create little backstories for it and what should be happening in that like modeling scene and I was like showing my model friend and she was like yeah we don't do that like why why are you doing that and then that's like the first time I really got into writing I was like maybe I should write a story about this and so that's like what ultimately took off for like for me, like that's where I found out my passion was, was with writing. So I like ended up stopped doing a lot of like the modeling, acting and play stuff. So I currently only like write and direct. How interesting that the story bug really just like bit you <laughs> while you're modeling and trying to come up with like a story <laughs> in the photo shoot. That's wonderful, <laughs> actually. I wish that took off because I feel like that would make so many more, not that photo shoots mm -hmm. are not already like beautiful, but to have like a full story that you could like kind of follow throughout the mm -hmm. set and like the the clothes and just the expressions. Yeah, yeah you, you, you're a writer. <laughs> <laughs> it was just, it was definitely like one of those moments where I was like, I love this. And I just, I actually still have this little book and it looks so funny because like one of the first few pages is just like this stick figure who I'm like really bad at drawing so yeah the stick figure and I was like this is how I want the clothes to be and this is how I want them to be like posed as and I showed my like photographer and he just he just laughed we're still friends but he just laughed <laughs> what does your daily routine look like so currently I still have a biology day job so right now my daily routine is I wake up at 6 a.m. I go to work to like, you know, actually pay the bills and stuff. And then normally as soon as I get off work, I come home and I just sit down on my laptop and I like try and write or like read scripts or do something like creative like that until about seven or eight. And then I normally like start eating dinner and or like working out and doing my other life things <laughs> so it's very like it's very like working two jobs and it's kind of sometimes exhausting but you know ambition <laughs> right I know that there are a lot of listeners who are probably living that like nine to five day mm -hmm. job and then doing passion job slash this is my career that I want very similar to the way you are doing while also trying to balance a personal mm -hmm. life and I know I kind of already asked this about when you were a model, actor, writer, director. Mm -hmm. But again, how do you manage to balance that, keep your sanity, and just be able to focus? Like, how would one stay motivated to continue this kind of thing? And like, and you have 10 to work yeah. out? Like, I'm impressed. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to lie. It, it is like, it's definitely a roller coaster. And it's like, I do have my like times where I'm just kind of exhausted. And even if I'm just doing the bare minimum of, of like reading a script, at least I'm still doing something. And then also like, I have to give a shout out, like my, my partner, he's very like work ethic too. And so like, we'll like both be sitting down, like he'll work full time, like, and then he'll work with me, like as I'm working on my computer too. And like, he's a very good like motivator for me, but I'm also very self-motivated too. So like, it's nice. Like we'll have dates where we like just work with each other. And it'll just be like us both on our laptops. And oh, so, nice. yeah, it is really nice. So, yeah, so it's very like, and definitely like taking time off is like so key, but not taking too much time off. It's really helpful for me too, as far, especially like for my writing, because like sometimes some of my scripts are about like something random I saw while I was hanging out with my friends, you know? And so as long as I feel like I'm being creative and as long as I feel like something is helping me like create, I feel like I'm doing my job as, and I'm, I'm like pushing forward to like what my dream goal would be. Lovely. <laughs> oh. What are some specific roadblocks you try to watch out for? Um, roadblocks are, I don't know. Sometimes I get like really down on myself that I like, been writing for about four years three four or five years now and like one of the major like roadblocks I try to like to stop myself from going crazy about is just like oh man like I thought in year one that I was gonna sell my first script and I thought that I was gonna be doing this and this and this and it's not it's not it's not realistic yeah it does happen for some people but I think me being realistic and like looking at my writing and seeing how much it's progressed 
is the best way for me to like break down that roadblock you know because like I'm always like worried I think all creators are worried about like burning out or like what if this is like the only idea I can come up with ever and I think um like starting off small and not immediately selling a script is like a good way to make sure you don't hit that I don't know if that answers your question (laughs) no yeah that's great thank you you identified a roadblock in a way that yeah what Oh, that's even more than I wanted. Well, you're welcome. <laughs> and what support or resources did you use or would recommend for someone trying to follow in your footsteps? I would say Google. Google is like so, so helpful. I remember I didn't even know how to write a script. I just like went on Google and typed in how to write a script. And Google was like, let me give you all of these links. And like some of the links I still use today. And so, like, Google gave me, like, books, it gave me links, it gave me, like, scripts to read for your first script, uh, first scripts to read, it gave me, like, ideas on, like, how to write a script and, like, where to start. So, Google's definitely, I know I feel like people probably like, oh, like, it's Google, but when you don't know where to start, start on Google. So, Olivia. Yeah. What was your upbringing like? Um, it was, it was i would say interesting i was definitely like i was more introverted as a child but like more still extroverted like 100 percent okay was doing everything by myself like and having no friends and so i think that changed that like made me become like a writer too just because like i'm so used to doing stuff on my own and being by myself and stuff as a child um but i also was like always getting into stuff like I'm like, uh, what if this happened? And then I would go do that what if thing, even though I already knew the answer in my head and I would ultimately get in trouble. So <laughs> so it was it was definitely like that. It was like back and forth, like, oh, I'm going to go do this random thing by myself. And then hopefully I come back and hopefully no one fall, like uh, figures out what I did. And then, you know, nine times out of 10, they do. But it was very like outdoors all the time, grapes, cuts all over my body from some jumping off a tree, falling out of a tree, <laughs> like rough housing, just stuff like that. I was definitely like an adventure type of a child. <laughs> Love it. I feel like that also probably added to your mm-hmm. storytelling too, just because you were creating your own. I mean, as corny as it's probably going to say, you're creating your stories yeah. and your stories. Yeah, no, pretty much. That's how exactly how that was. It was I grew up in Sac- mostly in Sacramento, and um, we had this giant American river, like, in, like, the backyard. And so I would always be just in the jungles of, you know, the forest and then not swimming because the American river kills so many people here. This is when my mom quoted. And also, like, I think like in college, I almost drowned in the American River. So yeah. Your mother said yeah. <laughs> the only reason I actually even survived like getting out of the river is because I was like remember I was like in like the depths of the the deep part of the river where you can't actually see anything. And I remember I was like and it was like a little thought bubble, you know, on commercials or on cartoons. And it's like, my mom's head was in the bubble and she was like, I told you not to do this. (laughs) And then I was like, I was like, can't let her be right. And I swam out of it. (laughs) So you survived kind of out of spite. 100%. Can't let her be at my funeral. And she's like, I told her not to. I couldn't do it. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I'm glad you survived. Thank you. I am too. Currently, you are working on a short film called Listen. Mm-hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Basically, Listen is, it's kind of like a piece of my heart. It's my little baby. It's a sci-fi about a mother who basically raises her daughter in a bunker for 16 years. She's never been outside, never seen, like, the sun. And ultimately, like, the child, she's, like, a lot like me as I was growing up. She would, like, try and, like, sneak out or she would, like, try and have these adventures and she finally breaks out um, through some, you know, some up and downs with her mom. And she finds out that maybe she should have stayed in the bunker. <laughs> mm. So it's, it's a sci-fi called Listen. And 
and one of the reasons it is like so near and dear to my heart is because it is an all black cast and me growing up who loves sci-fi have never seen an all black cast in sci-fi so mm-hmm. that's true that's true well thank you <laughs> you're welcome well what has like the journey from the uh the thought I what's the, what's the people call an idea that's supposed to be a clever way of calling it an idea? I don't know. I'm just gonna say idea. So, what was the steps that you took from when you first got the idea for Listen to where you are now, getting it crowdfunded? It has definitely been a journey that we are still on because we're still crowdfunding. But basically, I think in September or August of 2021 I was just sitting at a cafe with my partner he likes to challenge me so he like you should be doing more sci-fi short films and I was like I know he's like I was like but a lot of sci-fis are they you have to have like CGI and he was like you can do it you can make one without CGI and I was like you believe in me a lot I'm gonna try it (laughs) so then I like I remember I had my first draft and I just busted out really fast and I think the whole draft was like 30 minutes. It took me 30 minutes to do. And, and I let him read it. He's like, good start. Try again. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> so then we like uh, went through it again. Then we ultimately came up with the draft that we have right now. And it just happened to be at the same time that I met my producer, Steve, who was like helping me out so much with Listen. And I sent him like a really rough draft of the script. And he was like, I love this script. This is great. Let's do it. And so we were originally supposed to shoot it in December of 2021, but we realized that we're actually going to have to need some funding. So after we started talking, we started building a team talking about what ways we can like get some money for this, like crowdfunding is what we landed on. And then we started building up a team and like reaching out to people like KV, who does amazing concept art. Oh, thank you. (laughs) And so then like, we just like slowly started building a team and I think we have been where we are one week after we officially launched our crowdfunding campaign to fund listen. So it's been, it's been, definitely been a roller coaster. Um, like finding people who actually would love the script. Like we love the script. I would say since, you know, I did do work for you. It's a good script. Thank you. It's a good Thank script. Thank you so much. <laughs> Makes me happy. <laughs> so once you get your crowdfunding mm-hmm. money, cause it's gonna happen. Um, it. um, what will your next steps be with Listen? So the next steps would be to shoot it immediately. Um, <laughs> uh, right now we are actually I'm in kind of like a dilemma because like we have all our actors and everything, but some actors are are free on some days, some actors are free on other days, and then. You know, I just want to be able to show people, especially people who are like uh, giving us money to make this, um, the end result. So it's definitely like, uh, we already found out our locations and stuff like that. And once we finish crowdfunding, we could just shoot it immediately based on everyone's availability. Oh, Mm -hmm. okay. You're ready to go. Pretty much. Just waiting for the funds. (laughs) And your crowdfunding campaign is on Seed and Spark, correct? Mm-hmm. Okay, perfect. We will provide a link to the fundraising campaign if any of you lovely listeners are interested in supporting Olivia's project. Uh, you can find it in the link tree for Creating in Color as well as all social media posting for this episode. Mm-hmm. So besides listen, what kind of hobby side hustles or interests do you engage in? I'm actually like really in finding weird or interesting recipes on Instagram and then making people fall in love with them. <laughs> so yeah, like I have, I remember for Thanksgiving, I was like, okay, guys, I'm bringing like a mashed potato recipe from Instagram. And everyone was like, or not. <laughs> and I brought it anyways. And everyone was like, oh, actually, this is really good and ate the entire thing. So that's what I'm really into. Like I said, like, I'm really into like sending out recipes and stuff actually something else I just just remembered actually I learned how to propagate plants and by plants I mean specifically succulents I love succulents and so like every time I I have like a baby I had a baby succulent and now it's just like the, a big succulent and also started growing other succulents so then I chopped them off and propagated them 
and I made it like I'm pretty, pretty much like making like a little succulent bush and then I also bought more succulents so <laughs> I love it oh my god I love succulents too so that made me so happy they're so beautiful and I also like have a weird thing where I like to like touch the leaves because they're really soft and like mm -hmm. Like the way the texture is, it's just so nice. It it's makes me so happy. Nice. It's so <laughs> nice. It's, I know we were just talking about cats, um, but like, you know, I kind of see like a plant as a pet mm -hmm. in a weird way too. So yeah, like, oh, like I always talk to my plants. I'm like, oh, I do too. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, oh, that's my baby. She like, I give it a gender and everything. And then like, mm -hmm. they're like, I didn't know plants had genders. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's her. And then he's over there. He's been acting like a brat this week, but you know, <laughs> it's fine. He's still alive. I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> I'm glad that I'm not the only one that has plants with attitude because my bamboo is giving me the worst time right now. I'm like, you need to take it down a couple of times. Oh my God. I literally like... Me and my partner were watching a movie and I looked over the one plant I do have that's not a succulent and it's just been giving me the hardest time. And I was so happy because it started coming back alive. It was like, oh, good. like giving like leaves. I turned, like we're watching the movie. I casually look over and it shriveled. I was like, what are you up to? I like yelled at it. I was so mad. I was like, come on. You are so close. So yes, I I definitely talk to my plants. I feel that. I feel that. I'm so <laughs> what do you feel are the next steps in your journey? One of the goals I have for 2022 is to be able to learn how to shoot more sci-fi. It's still like, it's half of the goal of 2021 where I'm trying to figure out how to make more sci-fi without a budget. And it has been a challenge, but actually I figured out how I just wrote a script. It's called The Passing, and it's basically a sci-fi, no budget, um, two locations, my house and, like, the beach. And, yeah, so, like, this is, like, one of my biggest goals is to be able to shoot short films that I could just do myself without having to, like, crowdfund and stuff like that in order to, like, make more sci-fi shorts. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Because money, I feel like I had a conversation about this before. I can't <laughs> remember. I was talking to someone about something. But money is such a big motivator, but also mm -hmm. it can like... Deterrent. Yeah, exactly. It can like get you to just stop a project. So mm -hmm. this is not only just like fantastic for the sake of creating more content mm -hmm. and just like get, getting more stories and your voice out there even more, but a test if that yeah. makes sense. No, 100%. It is like we were watching some Robert Rodriguez and he's like, he's done a bunch of stuff. I think, yeah. oh, do you know who that is? Like the guy yeah, who created yeah. Spy Kids or something? Yeah, he's, uh, he barely ever had a budget. Yeah. 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 Like one of his like first features, I think he said he made it off of $800. He made like a million something dollars or something crazy. And so like, that's, that's a good return. Yeah. Right. <laughs> His first scripts or his first movies were all just like his siblings in it. So like that's kind of what I'm trying to kind of do. I don't have that many siblings and I also also don't have any family in LA. So so I'm trying to do that but with sci-fi. So like no budget sci-fi shorts that are good. <laughs> I see a lot of sci-fi shorts that are really bad and I'm just kind of like, ugh. So that is my goal. That's my biggest 2022 goal is to be able to do sh shoot sci-fi no budget films short films and do them well nice thank you we will have to talk with you again once passing is on its way okay now is the time for rapid questions where i'll <laughs> ask you a series of just a bunch of questions and you just try to answer it as quickly as possible oh, okay. are you ready we'll see <laughs> all right perfect i love that answer favorite color a uh, hot pink Ooh, hot pink like a hot neon pink. Oh. Yeah. Like hurt your eyes kind of pink. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> Burn your eyes on that pink. I love it. Yeah. Favorite number? Mm, seven. Teen. Okay. Least favorite number? <laughs> seven. <laughs> favorite animal? Cheetah. Favorite marine animal? What are those things called? A sea urchin. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. I accidentally stepped on one in Puerto Rico and then I became obsessed with them. So. Oh, I see. <laughs> Coffee or tea? 
Um, I can't drink caffeine, so neither, either. Oh. I love hot chocolate. I don't know if that counts. Oh, yeah. It's an enjoyment drink. Enjoy yourself. It's a hot, it's a hot beverage, so. Yeah. Favorite fairy tale? <laughs> mm, like fairy tale story like Disney or like creature. Oh, I like that better. Yeah. What's your favorite fairy tale creature or supernatural creature? What's your favorite supernatural creature? Oh, man. Okay, so this is going to sound weird, but my one of my favorite all-time movies is The Shape of Water. So the little amphibian guy in Shape of Water, he's my favorite. I love fish people, and I love plant people, so mm. I, mm-hmm. that's a great answer. <laughs> I have a weird obsession. I blame Piccolo from Dragon Ball Z. I just I'm so, love that's that That's so funny. <laughs> or like, oh, oh, what is that movie called? I like read the book, and I like saw the movie, and basically they, these like, people accidentally turn into plants and they're like still exist it's a really good sci-fi is it trolls too no it's it's a it has tessa thompson in it and it's so good i'm upset that no no i'm gonna find it i can't remember i can't remember but it's so good what's your what's the best song for you to wind down to and what's the best song for you to hype up to oh i love r&b and hip-hop so like or like R&B and soul. So her has this song, Slow Down. Mm, yes. Or it's Slow Down with her and some one of the Marleys. And then there's another one that I really love. I mean, her just makes great music. So so good. I just don't get how, how someone's so talented. <laughs> I don't know. I was just like, how, how did you get here? And Literally. Where have you been? <laughs> I needed more of this. Where have you been all my life? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Give me a word that starts with the letter S. And it can't be like a name of someone or a name of a noun. So no snake and no Sarah. Dependent. Hey, yeah, I'll take it. All right. An adjective. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, it, it followed the guidelines. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> following those rules (laughs) there you go there you go perfect perfect thank you so much olivia for speaking with us today it's been a pleasure do you have any social media you would like to share with us yes so my own personal social media is olive garden 22 that's for my instagram and then we have um a social media for the new short listen it it is literally that that's the name is like listen short (laughs) short film listen yeah it's just it's just that listen short (laughs) you know exactly what you're looking for it makes it a lot easier listen short it'll pop up (laughs) nice and thank you the listener for tuning in please follow creating in color on instagram twitter feel free to submit any questions for upcoming guests through our social media or creating in color cast at gmail.com if you're interested in following me you can find me on instagram youtube and twitch.tv at maybe it's kb thanks to nami kazi for creating the ending theme you can find more of his music on his SoundCloud at soundcloud.com slash namekaze. That's N-A-M-I-K-A-Z-E. Thanks to everyone sharing Creating in Color with their friends, family, and coworkers. We really appreciate any word of mouth or even helping to push our hashtag on social media, hashtag Creating in Color cast. If you are interested in supporting us financially, please consider making a one-time or monthly donation through our PayPal or coffee account, coffee.com slash Creating in Color, or purchasing Creating in Color merch off star rain studios we will be having a donor list starting next episode so feel free to like hop on that wagon but also donate to listen okay (laughs) do that first and then come back to creating color after (laughs) (laughs) before we wrap up do you have any departing words of wisdom for everyone listening um i can i can give you my uh instagram life motto if you want to look yeah yeah sure it literally just says, don't be a lady, be a fucking legend. Ooh. Yep. <laughs> Thank you so much. This has been Creating in Color. Keep striving, keep trying, keep creating. Bye. Bye.